Hey, what's up, guys? Crate Junkies. I'm not sure if you can even hear the music in the background, um, but if you can, it is Nine to the Universe by Jimi Hendrix. Um, actually, the reason why I'm even playing Hendrix, well, not, I love Hendrix. I mean, I got a t-shirt on. Love Hendrix, but I uh, usually don't pull Hendrix out much, to be honest, but lately I've been, um, here's the inner sleeve. Lately, I've been um, going through some of my collection. I took a lot of stuff off the shelves. Actually, what's behind me was is overflow of stuff that I haven't listened to or sleeved or cleaned yet. <laughs> this is my overflow, and this isn't even including my closet, which has four rows of overflow in a, in a pretty big walk-in closet. There's four rows of overflow and, and that is added to that so it's a lot of overflow and um, you can't even see you know these are only the first two rows the, the other rows are pretty pretty well filled up too so um, I'm gonna show some of the stuff I got I really haven't been getting a lot and that's why I really kinda skipped last week and didn't make a video I kinda let two or three weeks pile up here to try to get a, a half decent video going on um, so I'm just gonna show some vinyl you know talk like I usually do and just hang out you know I think I'm gonna actually like try to not rush as much this time because I kind of try to rush through things and it's not really like I don't know it doesn't feel like I'm hanging out I feel like I'm just like constantly and I gotta get this off the fucking screen it's driving me nuts it's like right in my face anyway alright so let's just start showing some records um first thing we got Flat Earth Society Waliko, this is like um, classic psych, basically. Um, this is a reissue. Um, I've been kind of getting reissues lately for stuff that's not easy to get originals of, you know, and stuff that I probably like. I don't like this enough to really go out and spend tons of money on the reissue. Now, if I find the, the I mean, the original, if I find the original, you know, for a half decent price, of course I'm going to pick it up, but. It's good, not saying it's bad, but it's just something that I'm not, I mean, especially like if you've never heard it, you know, to go after the original, it's kind of hard. And getting back to talking about, so that's Flat Earth Society, you know, it's a good record though, don't get me wrong, I've actually only spun it once, so I can't give a, a full review on it or anything, but it's a pretty good psych record. I, I mean, I advise picking it up if you can get it for cheap enough, I mean, they're only like, you know, 15, 20 bucks or something. Um... It's nice to, you know, I got a nice little reissue catalog kind of building, um, and I'm kind of into it in a way, getting these reissues, because they're so nice, and I can kind of start a little collection of reissued stuff, which is pretty cool, like this, but anyway, this is the next record, I actually do not like this record, um, I didn't like this at all, I spun it once, I really wasn't into it, it's psych, um, they have another record out I want to check out to see maybe if it's a little heavier, but it's just too poppy and just not catchy enough for me. Really wasn't into it. But a nice reissue. I don't even remember where the fuck I'm, where I'm putting these records at. But a nice reissue, anyway. Okay, next record we got. Oh yeah, Mass and F Minor, Electric Prunes. Really digging this. Um, I post this on the Facebook. Really good record. Um, nice beautiful copy on reprise um i don't know what to really say about it it's like half electric prunes half going to church you know and i actually heard the electric prunes weren't able to finish it and somebody else helped finish it there's a big long story behind it maybe you want to do some research on it this is like uh their last actual like i guess you could say studio album before the band disbanded and kind of separated and went their own ways but this is a good record um nonetheless it's it's not bad at all um i believe it's mostly in another language i forget exactly what language that is but it's actually really catchy good guitar riffs um you know there is there is some of that um original you know prune sound in here so i mean it is it is there it's present and it, it's not a bad idea pretty much a concept album and uh not a bad concept not a bad album not one of my favorite prunes albums but definitely one to get in the collection if you're if you're a prunes fan and um, i'm happy to have it next one i'm not a huge k 
Captain Beefheart fan. I know that sounds, you know, I like his earlier stuff, but I don't own enough of it to really um, have ever really sat down to really give him a chance. But I bought this on kind of a whim. There wasn't much there. I had some money. I figured, why not? You know, if I don't like it, maybe I can get rid of it. I listened to one, I think one, I might have listened to both of them. I can't, that's the thing. It's not even that memorable to me that I can even remember if I listened to both of the LPs. So, anyway, this is um, the Magic Band um, performing the music of Captain Beefheart. This was performed in Oxford, UK, June 6, 2005. This is a gatefold on Sundays there's the front and then there's a nice picture of the band here in the back and it's not a bad album but these guys you gotta remember these guys are getting old you know and I don't know I just I'm not I wasn't as impressed with it as I thought I was gonna be I'm not saying it's not an okay listen though I mean it's not it wasn't too terribly bad let's just put it like this nothing too memorable as far as what I've actually what I actually listened to, I think I might have only listened to the first LP. I actually really have a lot of shit to listen to lately, so I you know I will be returning to it before I make a decision whether or not I want to put this in the in the selling bins or not. But uh, yeah, I mean it it's what it is. Um, it's a nice copy. It's it's you know brand new mint condition, so that might be one that goes up for sale sooner or later. Next one, um, this is actually was sent to me by Memphis Jim and the Misses. Thank you very much. If you guys are watching, I don't see you comment much, so I'm, I'm not sure if you're regulars to my videos or not. But either way, thank you. Um, this was for my obsessions contest way back three, four, five, eight months ago. I mean, it was a really long time ago. But they finally got around to sending me something for the contest. Um, this is Dave Dudley. This is from 19, I believe the late 50s, early 60s. Dave Dudley, um, the thing I really liked about this and what the reason why I kind of requested this one is because right here, as you see right there, Link Ray and the Raymonds are featured on this album. I'm not really sure how much of them are on here, but um, it's definitely worth um, a shot in the collection. I haven't got around to spinning this one yet, but I definitely will be. Thank you so much, guys, for sending it to me. It's a really nice addition to the collection. Awesome stuff. Uh, I'm going to flip this. Flip the... Nine to the universe. I'm actually... Uh, this is. I'm on my Hendrix right now. Going through the Hendrix, sleeving it, cleaning it, pricing it. I'm not saying I'm going to sell it all, but I want to have it all sleeved, cleaned, and graded... And that's kind of what I'm doing right now, going through some of my classic rock stuff. I have some Floyd, some Hendrix, some... Who else do I got over there to go through? Doors, and some Zeppelin. So I'm going to do those today and get through all them. Okay, next on the list, this was a good one. Um, this is a hard-to-find, heavy psych record. Um, this is another Sunday's... This is a Sunday's reissue. Um cool thing about this record is it, it's it's on colored vinyl um, it comes with a poster and it's hard to find stuff this is uh, the only truth by Maury Gray nice heavy gatefold tons of information here on the inside about the band and some of the second disc stuff see the first disc is the full album because this was actually an album back in 19 I believe 69 it was recorded between 69 and 72, this album. And the first side is the original album here. And then the second side is all, like, unreleased material and shit that never was released before. I'm going to just show you one record so you can get an idea of what it's like. It's kind of clear green, and then the other one's like a clear yellow. Um, here's the label, the Sundays label, which I fucking absolutely love that label. And then I'll quickly pull out the poster and show you what that looks like. Maybe I should leave that for your imagination, just in case you want to buy it. Well, fuck it. Screw your imagination, man. This isn't about your imagination. This is about show and tell, all right? So let's show and tell. Um, here's the poster. Really cool poster. Probably will never, ever hang it up, but it's still cool. Um, so this is a classic, man. A classic heavy psych record. 
Um, very, very good. I listened to the original record, so the first disc, like over and over again, at least at least six, seven times. And um, I have not got around to listening to the bonus track stuff yet, but I'm really looking forward to it because the, the actual record was very, very good. Now, if you want to try to find an original of this record, it's it's pretty freaking hard. I know on the sticker, which I had the sticker, I got to put it with the record then, but it says something like very, you know, almost never going to, basically saying you're never going to find the original, so we went ahead and pressed this for you. So let's hope that's the truth. I mean, I highly doubt you're going to see this. You might get lucky and get it, but you can go get the Sunday's reissue just as good, um, if not better, considering there's extra stuff on here. It's nice package, and there's a lot of information with it, and it's 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 pretty cheap compared to what the original is going to cost you. Okay, so next one. This one I did. I got to listen to a little bit of. This is another psych record, Ellis Island by the Poppers. Um, I got to listen to a little bit of it. From what I heard, it was not bad at all. It was actually pretty good. Surprising, too, because it wasn't that expensive. Um, and I, you know, usually when it's something expensive, it's usually really good. When it's something super cheap, it's usually, I mean, you know, a lot of people use that logic. Well, that logic, you don't use that logic, okay? That's, that's bad logic. If you see something cheap, pick it the hell up because it could be gold. And, and really, musically, this is pretty damn good psych. Not bad. I, I suggest if you see it, pick it the hell up. Next one. This is great. Um, Nirvana. 60s band Nirvana. Wonderful fucking music group. Um, kind of reminds me of the Beatles. Um, but they also have... I don't know. I mean, they're like the Beatles, but they're not the fucking Beatles. You know, good shit. Um, really great songs. Our Love is the Sea. Um... What other one? All Through the Night, Rainbow Chaser, Tiny Goddess. I mean, really, this whole album's really good. What it is, is Lost in the Vault, so stuff that, like, uh, was either, you know, disregarded or, you know, came, you know, they came back to or whatever. It's a reissue, obviously, 2000-something um, reissue. Actually, excuse me, an I Italy reissue from 98. The vinyl's beautiful, heavy, nice, superb-sounding vinyl. And just to have something from these guys on vinyl is nice because finding their original records and not paying an arm and a leg for them is, is not an easy task. Now, you can't really say the word Nirvana without thinking about the 90s grunge band Nirvana, so why not throw one of those records in here as well? We got the Nir um, Nirvana Nevermind Sessions. Um, this is just a plain white label, um, unofficial release. Um, Unofficial official, if that makes any sense, um, because it is official. I mean, it is really the sessions from Nevermind. Um, a lot of tracks, well, not a lot, but a couple tracks on here that never made the album, which I think are really fucking good, and I definitely suggest to check them out if you've never heard them. And then there's some, like, uh, other versions, I guess you can say, of some of the tracks that are on the Nevermind album that are really fucking good. Um, just a great record to find, and I don't even have Nirvana Nevermind original. I don't even think I have it on CD. It's such it's it's a so, it's an album that I listened to so much when I was a kid that it's it just never was appealing to go out and get it again. Maybe one day I will, but to have the sessions is cool because I'm so familiar with the album that it's nice to listen to. It's like a breath of fresh air. You, you hear something different, you know, that's not necessarily the, the album I grew up with. It's a little different. Um, next one, this was a good one. Um, Garage. Um, beat, mod type stuff um, The Remains fucking awesome album this is a Sunday's reissue um, but just a killer fucking record I mean if you guys see this record around and you're wondering should I pick it up, should I not pick it up I mean this is, this is I mean, if you're into the Stones and you're into that Garage 60s scene this is a fucking this is like an epic record I mean it really is it's a moving, hopping, shaking, stomping damn good garage and good time I mean really it is and um, I definitely suggest uh, pick it up, download it, do whatever you gotta do listen to it if you've never heard it before there's gonna be songs on here that you've, you've heard before and you're gonna be like wow I didn't know you know that was them or something or you know maybe you are familiar with the scene or not but but either way there's a lot of good stuff on here, Diddy Wad Diddy's on here um, I Can't Get Away From You All Good Things Me Right Now when I want to know, say you're sorry, 
Um, just Why Do I Cry, Lonely Weekend. I mean, really, this whole album. I must have listened to this four or five times in a row and was just doing shit around, you know, you know, the shop and shit and just loving it, you know. I call this the shop now. This is the shop, this area, because now I'm selling records, so it's the shop up here. This is, this is, I mean, like, literally, I turned this entire upstairs of my house into a shop. So, I mean, it's what it is. The shop! The fucking shop. The crate junkie shop. Okay, here we go. Bo Grumpus, Before the War, sealed. 1968 Psych. Have not opened it yet, but I will be opening it. It's a sealed 60 Psych record. I've never had a sealed 60 Psych record, but I do now. Um, not, you know, super expensive or anything. It's not like it's a $300 album or anything. You know, it's 20 30 bucks, sealed, 40 maybe. You're the right person, 40 50 whatever. But um, I'm going to open it and listen to it. I actually did download a couple of the tracks. I didn't think, because of the price not being so expensive, I figured it might not be that great. But I listened to it on YouTube and actually was really digging what I was hearing. And um, I'm eager to crack it open and listen to the whole thing on a full round spin. So that was a good one. And that's an OG. Um, next one, some jazz. I don't know. Yeah, I got some jazz coming. Just a couple here. Um, this is one that was on my want list for a while. I just seen it showed on the VC. This is uh, Donald Byrd's Street Lady. Gotta love that. Just a gatefold. And then we got nice blue note pressing. And uh, just some good old soul, you know, soulful, funky jazz, which is always, you know, the, the good stuff to me anyway. I mean, that's what I look for. And uh, anything soulful, funky, anything um, spiritual jazz and stuff like that, it's kind of what I'm into um, when it comes to jazz. I mean, sometimes lounge, cool jazz, that type of thing I'm into too, but it, it depends. Um, it depends on the mood. This is Blackbird, Donald Bird, another Donald Bird record. This is another one on Blue Note. Pick that one up. This is uh, did not get to spin these two yet. Usually the Jazz are the last ones that that get spun. So I mean, I spun almost everything that I picked up except for the some. Actually, towards the end there's some Jazz I did spin. Um, next one, Saucer Full of Secrets. Just kind of filling a slot in my Floyd collection. Um, some of the earlier Floyd records have eluded me. Um, you know. I have, um, what is it, two shade, uh, what is it, what the fuck is it called, the one with the two albums on it, I have that, but it is a Japanese press, but now I got this one, so this is good, Saucer Full of Secrets, and this is the original US Tower Records press, very good shape, I'd say, you know, sleeves like a near mint, Records like a VG Plus, possibly, maybe a little bit better, maybe near mint. Um, plays great, wonderful. I'll show you the back. I mean, you guys seen this record probably a hundred times, but why not? To the guys who really don't or haven't seen it. And I'm pretty sure there's some people watching this that might never have seen it before. This was a good one. Um, yeah, this was a fucking good one. This was a good score. And really, I'm happy, too, because I would have never really got into this one band here if it wasn't for this record. This is called Spirit Orgasmus of Geronimo and Credence Clearwater Revival. Now, obviously, everybody knows Credence. Um, you know, I've listened to Credence millions of times. I've grew up with Credence. I mean, you know, and Credence is a great band and all their records are, well, most of their records are worth really finding, especially their earlier stuff. Now, Geronimo is a band I've heard of and I've heard some of their stuff, but never really had anything on vinyl because their first three or four records are really hard to find and they're really expensive. So, um, if you have a chance, listen to the song, Hey Ya. Shit, just listen to anything from Geronimo's first three or four records. Really hard, heavy, rock, psych even in a way. Just really goodness, I'm telling you. And this was a really cool... This is an original press from 1970, a split. It has Hey Ya on it. It has a couple of Geronimo's really good tracks. And the Credence side's good, too. It's on this nice pink vinyl, which I didn't even know existed in 1970. Um, you know, I didn't even know they pressed records on pink vinyl in 1970, but obviously they do. So this was a really good find. Um, very excited to get this. Happy to get it. I think I paid a little bit too much for it, but 
Um, because it does come with a poster originally. This one did not. Um, sad face, but I don't know. But it was still a good pickup. I was really happy to get some of Geronimo stuff on vinyl. Next one, uh, this is like the second compilation these guys came out with. This is Hawkwind Masters of the Universe from 1977. Pick that up. It's just a comp. Uh, a lot of good long, flowing psychedelia on there. Um, next one, we got The Clowns, Ringling Brother, Barman and Bailey. I really wasn't digging this record um, that much at all. Check that cover out, though. Pretty nice cover. Cool thing about this is it's a not-for-sale promotion, which I thought was pretty cool. Gatefold. Really like the gatefold. I think she's cute. I think she's cute. And I like the gatefold. I like this dude's face. But other than the cover, which I think is pretty cool, and other than the, the gatefold itself and the fact that it's promotional, the music really wasn't sparking any interest for me. I'm going to have to go back and listen to it again, but it just wasn't up my alley. But still a cool record to pick up and find. Next one, Chili Whack. Now, I actually just recently seen an, a later record by Chili Whack, and I was, like, turned off by it. But this earlier stuff, this earlier one, I think, this was really good. Um, I love the cover. It definitely struck me as soon as I seen it. I turned it around, and I see these guys on the back, and I was like, yeah, that looks like some good 70s rock right there. Then I looked, and I seen flute, saxophone, organ, piano, drums, bass, you know, anything you can imagine. So I'm thinking, yeah, it's got to be some good 70s rock. And yeah, it, it really, it is. It's really good stuff. I'm definitely digging it. Um, if you ever see this record, pick it up. I can't speak much on their later stuff, but I'll tell you by the cover of some, the cover of the record I've seen, it, they look corny as hell in their later years. So I would stay away from their later stuff. But that earlier one, that's a good, that's a good one. Next one, another one I picked up kind of for the cover on, on a really slow day. Didn't, couldn't, wasn't really finding much, but I found this. I thought it was pretty cool looking. I think I've even seen it before. Um, I love the haircuts, you know, turtles, monkeys type haircuts. This is um, Don and the Good Times, so good. Love that cover. I mean, you can't beat that for 60s pop. Just, just a really cool cover. And the music on this, from what I did listen to, I didn't listen to a lot of it, but what I did skim and, and briefly listen to was actually pretty good. This is one I want to give a full-fledged, loud listen to because I think this might actually be half decent if you ever see it pick it up I mean it's a nice cover if anything you're getting a cool cover I mean sometimes that's enough sometimes it's not um, next one same thing but this one I did pick up for some of the music on it this is pop oldies explosion volume 2 um, I do love the cover love this back love it I mean just absolutely fucking love it that is so 60s pop it's not even funny and uh, but it's got guys like um, question mark and steerings are on here. Syndicate of Sound, The Trash Men, Shades of Blue, Castaways. Um, I mean, just tons. That, you know, Shangri La. I mean, some really good stuff on here. So I figured, why not? And it was really cheap. So why not? Okay, now this record is is a is killer. I mean, I I absolutely Tommy Bolin, Candy. Um, I think her name's Candy. Now hold on. Give me a second. Candy Givens. The album Zephyr. Absolutely fucking love this record. Uh, great blues psych. Um, Tommy Bowen, obviously. Just wonderful guitar. This is on the Probe. ABC Probe label. If you ever see this, you're going to most likely find it with some ring wear. And I, I mean, I've never seen this record without ring wear. So pick it the hell up either way. It's worth it. The listen is well worth it. Um, there's a song on here called Somebody Listen. What a great track. Check out the gatefold. She's hot. Tommy Bowen's the man. She's hot. Gatefold's really cool. Music's amazing. Listen 
to somebody listen. And actually, listen to the whole fucking album. It's well, well, well worth it. If you're a 70s rock fan, if you're a psych fan, if you're a blues rock fan, this is an album to get in your collection bottom freaking line. If you've never heard about this album, you know nothing about this album, and I'm the one telling you about it, I'm telling you to go find it and pick it up, put it in your collection, listen to it a couple times. You're going to like it. You're going to enjoy it. I promise. Next one. This was in a big stack of shit I got the other night. Um, did not get to listen to this yet, but it's Buddy Rich and Lionel Hampton, uh, Teddy Wilson, Zoot Sims, George Dev Devire. This is an album called Transition. Obviously, Buddy Rich. Everybody knows Buddy Rich. This is one I, I didn't. I haven't seen much. It's on uh, this fucking um, Groove Merchant label which I'm not as too familiar with either. Nice gatefold. Um, kind of enjoy the, the cover here and what it, the, the way this looks. It's like uh, the hatching of Butterfly, which I thought, I thought was pretty cool. A monarch butterfly. We actually used to hatch those. Um, my friend's dad used to do those. But pretty cool, Buddy Rich. Nice little pickup. Um, next one. Oh, this was great. A, a UFO phenomenon. This is one I just been like, I don't know. I just never freaking see this record, and I got it in near mint condition for like a buck. I mean, mint. This thing is dead mint. I swear to God. I mean, it's in such good shape. Blues rock, rock, good, good classic '70s rock. Little bluesy. Um, UFO, definitely great, great album. Um, this is just like kind of showing where UFO is going to be going in the future. You know, it's there's like glimpses of what they they, they will go on to become. You know what I mean? Um, but it is a great album. Loving the track, Queen of the Deep, and what's the one on the first side? It's the last track on the first side. I really like that one too. Um, Rock Bottom. Really loving those tracks. Queen of the Deep and Rock Bottom. Check them out. Definitely good. Good tracks, great album. Thank God I found that one. This one I didn't get to listen to, but is a little weird. Um, it's called Moog, the Electric Electics, Eclectics of Dick Hyman. And this is a promotional, not for sale copy. It says right there in the fucking sticker, so you obviously know. But just a weird looking, almost spacey type record. It's not, the vinyl is playable it's not a good it's probably like a vg let's say the vinyl's like a vg i'd say the vinyl's like vg but this is not a record you see a lot so it's it's one that you might still want to get in this condition that's why i got it because i mean it's one you don't see every day and i mean i didn't pay much for it anyway so it's not a big deal but uh it's in good shape in a way i mean it for what it is it's in good shape i don't see i never even see this record much less to see it in different conditions so I grabbed it, hoping it would play, and it plays great, so I'm happy with it. Um, it's one you don't see. I'm not too familiar with what it's all about, though. Um, topless dance, starting sounds of the brave new music, synthesized, composed, that heralds the future art of sound expansion, Moog, the electric electics of Dick Hyman, this is the new sound of music, amazing melodic um, electronic music played on the Moog synthesizer and there was a lot of this stuff at around the time the Moog synthesizer was popular a lot of people coming out with albums using the Moog the synthesizer and everything I've come across a couple of them that one seems to be one of the coolest ones I've come across I actually came across a, a country one a little bit ago that was actually pretty cool this one this fucking thing is is fucking terrible I don't know if anybody out there wants this this is Orpheus. I picked this up uh, for really cheap, but um, you know it's on MGM, and, and I tell you, I have noticed MGM is like iffy. You know, like Mothers of Invention have stuff on MGM, and like that's okay, you know, but like anybody else on MGM is really fucking shady. Like, I mean, there's probably like I think Gentry's were on MGM, a couple other guys. It's hit or miss, I think, what it comes down to, and this is a miss. 
Now, I couldn't even get past the first side, so I'm not going to sit here and say that the second side, there was some hints of, like, this really nice guitar in some of these songs that just wasn't loud enough and just wasn't more as powerful as it should be. Too fucking, like, pussy, you know? It was just, like, pussy shit, man, and I just wasn't digging it. You know, I was hoping, like, for some psych. I wasn't familiar with Orpheus at all before this record, and, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a bad record, you know, I mean, it's a nice-looking record. It looks cool. Um, it's on MGM. It's in good shape. I just don't dig it. And that's really what it comes down to. I'm just not too ecstatic about it. Next one, Liege and Leaf, Fairport Convention. Not a big Fairport Convention fan. Got this for cheap. Um, it's in pretty good shape. It plays well. It's got a gatefold, but it's not worth opening. Picked it up. Um, not a big Fairport Convention fan. Just not a very big fan. Um, next one, this is a good record. Stan Getz, Reflections, some cool type lounge lounge jazz. Stan Getz, you can't beat him. This is on Verve. Nice black Verve. Fucking beautiful mint copy of this record. I mean, it is. It's in great shape. Just fucking, I mean, fantastic shape on this record. So that was pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you some of the shit I didn't. I picked up just on whims, and I'm going to quickly breeze through this. Quickly breeze through this stuff. Um, this is all whim buying, okay? This is what I do. I buy 100 records, and maybe 20 of them I even bag up. Um, Betty Roche. This is an import, not for sale. You know, lyricist, soul, funk. Um, funky, funky soul type stuff, more or less R&B soul stuff. I did not get to listen to it. A lot of this I did not get to listen to, so I'm not sure how good this is. But uh, Betty Roche, another copy of the Standells Dirty Water. Um, this one seems splitting a little bit, um, but nice looking anyway. And the vinyl's like a. What are we looking at on the vinyl here? It's about a VG, maybe VG plus if, if that, but it's it's a playable copy. But I never, I don't turn down that, you know. I know there's going to be somebody who wants it. Um, Wake Up Everybody, Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes with the original inner sleeve. Um, <sighs> Tony Matola, Heart and Soul, Guitar. Basically a jazz guitar record. Gatefold. On project. Project. For Ferrant and Teacher getting together um, on Pickwick. You know why I picked this one up. Pretty cool looking record. This one, I uh, forget exactly. What, music for an experiment in imagination composed and conducted by Ray Martin. This is a Phase 4, um, a pretty really cool London Phase 4, and it's in really good shape, too. Love this cover here. I mean, this is really cool. This, I do have to admit, is a pretty cool-looking record. Nothing special there, but, yeah, really nice record. I mean, really, the art on that is just so cool. This, I thought, was going to be something better, man, but it just ended up not really being that great. This is some folky stuff. Sammy Johns. Um... Early Morning Love, it contains, I guess, just self-titled Sammy Johns. I don't know, I thought it was going to be something a little bit better, more sought after, but it, not really. Um, copy of Tommy Rose, Dizzy. Original Press. Um, always pick up the Haunted House stuff. Personally, I'm into that kind of thing. Sound Bites, Haunted House stuff. Um, this is Kent State original soundtrack from I believe the early or uh, the early 80s 81 still in the shrink really good condition Richie Havens is on there Grace Slicks on there John Sebastian um, this is a really cool comp heavy hits really really cool comp in great shape heavy vinyl some great bands on here that's actually a really cool one. Um, the English Congregation Softly Whispering, I Love You. The English Congregation, not a bad record. 
Another comp, I couldn't really find much information on. This is Rock 75. Really cool psychedelia looking. That's why I picked it up because it's really cool looking. Um, it's a compilation. Very, it, It's like an import comp too. It looks like an import on MCA. One of the labels in here is white and one of them is yellow. So it's different colored labels on each record, which I thought was weird. So I just grabbed it for the heck of it just to check it out. Still haven't found any info on it. Um, picked up two 7 inches or 45s by Zeppelin. Got both of these for 45 cents for both, so that's not bad. Immigrant Song and Over the Hills and Far Away, Dancing Days, an Immigrant Song and Hey Hey What Can I Do, both on Atlantic, some radio, bloopers, double LP, um, mint condition copy of Scorpions Worldwide Live, Gatefold, double LP, mint condition. Um, some hair metal, YNT, Contagious, Mint, Promotional, Gold Stamp, Promo, some weird monk music, um, Lotus and the Wild Honey, this is uh, some monk stuff, I mean look at these guys in the back, they're fucking monks, I don't know, you know, I'm not going to pass it up for cheap, um, some honky tonk bluegrass, some shit for Dave here man, Buzz Busby, and Leon Morris, Mint Condition. Um, this is actually a $15, $20 album here. I don't know. I didn't listen to it yet. Now, this one I did listen to. Um, and last but not least, Mac Martin and the Dixie Travelers, Backtracking. This is actually pretty fucking good. I like it. Good old honky-tonk type uh, banjo stuff. Twangy. Um, kind of rare. Not expensive, but rare. Um, if that makes any sense. But that's it, guys. Cray Chunkies, man. 40 fucking four minutes of pure and utter bliss. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll try to hit get enough records up to do another one next week. If not, I'll see you in two weeks. I actually have some other ideas for some videos, so I might be back earlier than expected for some other shit. I might do some reviews, or um, I have some other things I'm thinking about doing that I might give a shot at later on this week. So just keep a lookout, man. I hope you guys enjoyed. Check out all the links below. My Tumblr my Facebook, the VC's Facebook community, and anything else I may put down there.